With the first pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select LeBron James. Detroit Pistons select Darko Milicic from Serbia and Montenegro. Denver Nuggets select Carmelo Anthony. Select Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, Chris Kamen, Kirk Heinrich. With the eighth pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select TJ Ford from the University of Texas. Some thought he would be a higher pick. Some say he can't shoot it well enough. We all know about the 2003 NBA Draft. It's one of the most famous drafts of all time, and when it comes to the notable players that were selected, people are obviously quick to mention LeBron, Melo, Wade, and Bosch, and rightfully so. And eventually, you might get around to mentioning Kirk Heinrich and Chris Kamen. Oh yeah, along with Darko Milicic, if you're ever in the mood to make fun of someone. But other than that, that's pretty much where the conversation ends when it comes to the top picks in this draft. But hold on a second, this guy right here actually deserves a bit more of our attention. Sure, he didn't necessarily have the most illustrious career, but believe it or not, when taking a closer look at his basketball past, it might be the most unique of them all. Just the other day, I was eating my breakfast while watching some good old first take, like I always do, when I came across a random Carmelo video, and something kinda caught me off guard. Look, I identified Carmelo as the best player in the country when people were talking about TJ Ford at Texas and no one was picking Syracuse at the time. When he said that, I was like, damn, I haven't heard anyone say that name in a while. In fact, Growing up, the only reason I even knew of TJ Ford was because I pulled one of his cards out of a pack of trading cards back in the day, and I remember not really knowing who he was at the time. I thought he was like the most irrelevant player ever, and honestly, I probably used that card as toilet paper when we ran out. I know! Yeah, that's how much of a no-name I thought he was. But just the other day, something in my head told me to look more into this guy's career. You know, just to see if he accomplished anything special. I mean, Max Kellerman brought him up, so why not? And let me tell you, I was shocked to find out what this man went through. Growing up, wherever he went, Ford was never the biggest kid. But his desire to be great was much stronger than anyone he encountered. He said he wanted to be the best point guard in the NBA one day, and that mentality definitely made him stand out from the rest. Back in high school, during his junior and senior years, TJ basically never lost a game. He led his team to a 75-1 record, with a 62-game win streak in the middle of that, and won two state championships for Willow Ridge High School, located in Houston, Texas. And eventually, due to his great play, the college offers started to pour in, ultimately choosing the University of Texas, which kinda surprised his friends and family. This was a time before anyone even considered the University of Texas. Well, at least a player with options. This was before the likes of Durant, Aldridge, Tristan Thompson, Avery Bradley, and many others became a Longhorn. So many were confused by his decision, but his mom insisted he choose that school to pave the way for future generations. And boy did he. During his two years with the Texas Longhorns, he became the first freshman in NCAA history to lead the nation in assists, which helped get them to their first Final Four appearance since 1947. His years at Texas were so brilliant that he was handed both the John Wooden Award as well as the Naismith Player of the Year honor. TJ Ford was on top of the world, and he knew it was time to jump to the pros, so he declared for the 2003 NBA Draft. But about a week before the draft, something happened that almost took everything away. One night, 
he decided to join a random pickup game at the gym. But this wasn't your ordinary pickup game. The entire Longhorns football team was in the mood for some hoops, including Vince Young. And with TJ thinking it would be harmless, joined the game, and of course, was the best player on the court. But remember, he wasn't the biggest person, and definitely was not the strongest. And we all know how some football players tend to play basketball. They seem to be more physical than what's necessary. So one play, with the ball in Ford's hands, drove to the basket, but one defender aggressively jumped right in front of him, causing TJ's body to spin around, which led to his head slamming against another player's thigh, and immediately dropped to the floor. And as he described, he felt nothing. His arms couldn't move. There was absolutely no feeling below his neck. And the only thing running through his mind was the NBA. He remembers thinking, why now? He was projected to be a top five pick. So it makes sense that he was freaking out. After 20 minutes of laying there on the ground, he was beginning to fear if he would ever even walk again, let alone play basketball. Eventually, the medics took him to the hospital. And miraculously, after 30 minutes went by, he finally began to regain feeling in his body and just laid there, crying, out of pure joy, totally relieved, and agreed that it wasn't the smartest idea to be messing around right before the draft. And lucky for him, this was at a time before social media, so this scary incident didn't really make any headlines, and was able to proceed with his life like nothing ever happened. But little did he know, that incident would be the first of many in his career. Heading into the draft, many were impressed by his ability to see the play before it happens, like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, but also concerned about his height and his lack of ability to shoot the ball. TJ, what goes through your mind when you hear, too short, can't shoot? Well, I just know I always believe in myself and I don't let anyone um, just tell me I can't do something. So people say I can't shoot, but I just like to have fun and enjoy the game and eventually, you know, things will work out in the best for me. He was selected 8th overall by the Milwaukee Bucks. Everything seemed to be going great his rookie year in Milwaukee, but just 55 games into the season, it happened again. The Bucks were facing the Timberwolves. Midway through the 4th quarter, TJ Ford checked into the game. He came off a pick and roll and drove to the basket, and that's when he collided with Mark Madsen, which sent him straight to the ground, landing on his tailbone. And once again, he suddenly felt nothing, motionless on the floor. He said Kevin Garnett was yelling at him to get up, but he couldn't move at all. And just like before, he was terrified. Just looking at them bring out the stretcher was a scary sight for everyone in the building. He was immediately rushed to the hospital, and it turns out he was diagnosed with spinal stenosis, a condition that basically puts a lot of pressure on your spinal cord and pinches the nerves in your spine. In fact, he already had symptoms of this dating all the way back in high school, but he figured he didn't need surgery then because it didn't really affect his play on the court. But this time around, he knew that he couldn't risk it anymore. He was afraid that if it were to happen again, then he might be permanently paralyzed. So without hesitation, he underwent surgery, which forced him to sit out for the rest of his rookie year. In the beginning stages of his recovery, he said it was the toughest time of his life. Not only could he not play basketball, he said he couldn't even carry a bag of groceries without it being extremely difficult. Throughout the next year, he was determined to get back on the court. He trained with former NBA player John Lucas, working on his shooting, stamina, and strength. And finally, after sitting out the entire 04 05 season as well, he made his return in November of 05 and managed to stay healthy all season long with almost no effects of his injury. But in that offseason, the Bucks were looking to move on from TJ and ultimately traded him to the Toronto Raptors where he actually began to play the best basketball of his life while becoming a low-key dominant duo with Chris Bosh. In 2007, he was voted as the fastest player in the league at that time, further showing that he made a full recovery. And all of those hours at the gym, working on a shot, paid off, consistently showing up in clutch moments. And 
helped lead them to the playoffs. All this while again remaining healthy all year long. The following year in the 708 season, after two years injury free, he was finally able to have fun playing the game of basketball. But yet again, he ran into another obstacle, one that he was all too familiar with. On December 11th, 2007, it looked like he had a clear layup, but Al Horford didn't give up on the play. And unfortunately, Horford's block attempt hit TJ right on top of the head and said it felt like someone hit him with a hammer. He feared that this one could be the one that ends his career. He said he was seriously thinking about quitting while getting wheeled off on the stretcher. He was so angry and ready to step away, but he knew he just couldn't give up that easy. He loved this game too much and had to endure another grueling recovery process once again. While he was sidelined, Jose Calderon was performing at a high level and eventually took over the starting point guard job. TJ Ford did return two months later, but he refused to come off the bench, so his next stop would be in Indiana, where he did play well, but after those numerous injuries, he couldn't quite play at the high level that he really wanted to. He did have a few more scares throughout the next couple years, but none more scarier than when he was a member of the San Antonio Spurs. It was against the New York Knicks on a December night in 2011. Baron Davis tries to box Ford out for a rebound and ends up elbowing Ford in the back. A hit that wouldn't really have affected any other player, but in TJ's case, it left him once again motionless. Except this time, he wasn't thinking about his career. He was thinking about his life, his brother, and his kids watching at home. He knew right then and there, it was officially the end of his basketball career. But instead of getting carted off by a stretcher, he wanted to exit the game on his own two feet because he said that he didn't want a stretcher to be the very last image NBA fans see of him. So after gathering all of his strength, he headed to the locker room and once again denied any sort of assistance that involved wheels. They offered a wheelchair and you'll see him basically uh, he's no. like, no, I'm not taking that thing. Uh, one tough customer, and man, thoughts and prayers are certainly with TJ Ford. And once he arrived in the locker room, he told his brother that he is officially retiring. I succeeded at, at B. Nas of being a little guy, making it to the NBA. And, you know, I know I didn't have the career that I anticipated and everyone anticipated me having, you know, coming from being the player of the year in college basketball. But, you know, I, I still think uh, I had a successful career. Even though some people do see him as a bust, and those injuries certainly had something to do with that, he says even if he was given the chance to go back in time and change anything he wanted to, he still would go through all of those terrifying moments again because it made him into the strong man he is today. I, I look at life different since I got hurt. You know, I don't take too much for granted, and I definitely don't take basketball for granted. So. And as for what he's been up to nowadays, TJ Ford has his very own basketball academy that provides children with life skills, educational resources, mentorship, and everything they need to eventually land a scholarship. So what are your thoughts about this incredible story? A story that shows that no matter how many times you fall down, you can always find the strength to get back up. Make sure to comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.